today we're going to get the dual top, well the Webasto dual top, the diesel burning part of it running without the ECU. The ECU is over here, not connected in any way, shape or form. And we're only going to be using three things that you can buy off the internet, be that eBay, Amazon, Aliexpress, anywhere at all. And I will bring you in now to look at the things and then I will show you it in operation. Now this works for any of the uh, diesel heater, air heaters. Not sure about the watery ones, I imagine you could probably get it to work, but I don't have one here to test with. So, the first part is this part. A ZK PP2K. And this we use, it's got two modes, it can do PWM or the other pulsy one, which I think is the one we're using. Basically, this top number here is how long the fuel pump turns on for, and this is how long it turns off for, so you get a pulse. And this is in milliseconds? The one here would be one second in one point, so we're, that's 800 milliseconds, that's 0 0.025 seconds, or 25 milliseconds. That just has 12 volt in, and then out to the pump. Nothing nothing else, absolutely. I should say there's there's no, ele no, no electronics, these are electronics, but there's no wiring, there's no programming, there's no nothing, you don't have to know how to program or do anything. If you can join wires together, you can get this to work. Uh, and then the other two things are these PWM motor controllers being a, well, they're both ZK BMGs. They're good for up to 12 amps. So I've got one on the glow plug and one on our blower burner motor here. Uh, and that's it. That's the three things that we need. Well, four things we need. Where is it? Uh, we need uh, the carbon monoxide meter because we've got absolutely no idea what state it's running because there's no, well, not no idea. We can listen to it and listen to see how it's burning, but we don't know how well it's burning. So we need the carbon monoxide meter to see if we've got it lean, rich, or somewhere in between. And all this is just powered off the 12 volt battery. Uh, okay, the fuel pump things run off to a volt power supply because I didn't have enough wires. But basic operation, maybe I should bring you in closer for this. So we can see, can we see all three things at once? I can see that you can see them, but you can't really see the numbers. I'll just read them out to you as we're doing it. All right, so this one is the glow plug. On these, the twiddly knob is your adjustment between zero and 100%, and you press the knob to turn it on and off. They do have the annoying thing where if it's set at zero and you press it on, the green light doesn't light up to tell you that it is on until you move it to like 1%. So, being the glow plug, right, well, I'll move it to like 5% and then turn it on. So, turn that on. The green light has come on. And now we'll ramp the glow plug up to like 60%. Maybe 30, 40, 50. Right, so, 60%. So that's giving it like 60% of 12 volts. You could probably go 80%. It'd be fine. And then we just kind of hover about there for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. Then, that's not been 30 seconds, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Set this to about oh, 10%. That was already on, see? I didn't know. So that's blowing in a little bit of air. And we come back and we'll turn the fuel pump on. So I've currently got it set to the 25 milliseconds on and 800 milliseconds off. So, we'll start running that. And then we'll see if we can hear when it lights. You hear the whomping? I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, there it goes. It's starting. So we're going to turn up the air a little bit. Bit more air. So that's us up at that. Now I'm going to give it a bit more fuel, which you do by reducing the off time. So the fuel's starting to get faster. At this stage, it's probably lit and we can wind back the glow plug. So, glow plug off, off, and then we'll wind in a bit more air, a bit more fuel, more air. And I've either just blown out or it's still lit. I think it's still lit. It sounds like I've got I don't know if you can hear it. 
I've got a burn going. Let's have some more fuel. And more air. I think I've blown out. Maybe? Let's put the old carbon monoxide thing in. I mean, I can still hear it. It's still hot. The exhaust is still hot. It's still coming out hot. At this stage, I don't really want to put more fuel in. I'm going to just turn the burner up slowly. It's definitely hot. Still no sign of a carbon monoxide reading. Oh no, there we go now. Right, so it needs... Let's see, more air. Let's see if we can get the carbon monoxide to come down. going up so I've either gone too hard or it's not stabilised yet. Right, so I need to come back down a bit. Or bring the fuel. Right, see the carbon monoxide is coming back down again so we need to go more fuel and then we can take the air up a bit. Oh that's too much. Right, so it does work. Right, let's stop this madness. We just turn the fuel pump off. Stops pumping fuel. Flames out. There's the smoke from the flame out. And then we just leave that there to cool down. Let me just turn it down a bit more quieter. Like 20% would be fine just to keep air going through it and cooling down. So if you were tuning this to run, you would obviously do it in stages. You would pick a fan speed, like we'll just go for like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60%. And each one of those 10% things you would use your gauge and the fuel and tweak it until you got, you know, your 10 to 20 parts per million output of the exhaust and then obviously write those numbers down and then, because you can use them again later and then go back down the way and double check to make sure that the same figures work because obviously once it's up to hot, hot temperature it burns a lot cleaner when you're, obviously when you're coming back down the numbers will be slightly different but running up the cool way probably gives you what the best way of doing it because once it eventually cools down again, you'll get different numbers. So start low and work your way up. And that's uh, how I would do it. I had it running earlier before I filmed this. And it was running clean. It was running 10 parts per million. And it was hot as balls. Everyone was banging and what round about it. Because it was nice and warm and running efficiently. Now, a word of warning on the fuel driver. As soon as you apply power to this, it turns on. And starts pumping fuel. So if you're building, I might if you would put a switch in with the fuel thing as well, just so because I don't know, maybe if you turn it on, and you forget, and it thunders fuel in while it's running. Now, let me just explain. As I probably did a shit job earlier, but so the 0 0.025 is the on, and the 0 0.0 no, the 0 0.208 is the off times. So to make it go faster, you turn the off time down, and to make it go slower, you turn the off time up. Let me take you to the whiteboard till, till I make this make sense. Dry marker. So, it is pulse width modulation. The difference between the ons and off. So, let's make that 0 volts and we'll make up here uh, 12 volts. So the pump goes a bit and it goes on for 25 milliseconds and then is off for 200 milliseconds. It's off. And then it goes on for 225 milliseconds, and then off for 200, and then on, and then off. 
so you get that output. So to make it pump more fuel, this time here is the bit you're reducing. So, so your 25 milliseconds stays the same. There's the 25 milliseconds, and then you're reducing the time of the off time. So it's doing that. On, off, off, on, off, that. So it feels counterintuitive turning it down to make it faster, but what you're doing is decreasing the amount of off times. And as for the 25 milliseconds, feel free to experiment with that. That is just the amount of time the, pul the, pu the pump is on for. And bearing in mind, it is an electromagnet and it is, in, it is a, a pulsed pump. So if you put it on for too long, the pump will get to the end of its stroke. So at 25 milliseconds, I feel that's the right amount of, obviously the inside of the pump. Let's just do the inside of a pump. And it has a piston. Let's just make that a piston. And obviously there's a one-way valve, so it sucks into that bit and then pushes out the output out of that way. So the 25 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds. That is enough time for the pump, the piston to go from the stop position back over there and then releasing it back. So if you make it shorter than that, the pump, the piston inside the pump might only go like halfway along. So you're getting less fuel. And short of that, it only moves it a little tiny bit and you get nothing. If you make it longer than that, the piston is going to the end of the pump and is stopping there. So at, I don't know, 50 or 100 uh, milliseconds, it's pulsing up, hitting a dead stop, and then the coil inside the pump heats up because you're now a, basically a dead short almost for, in, the, in its eyes. So there's a, you know, a balancing act. I found 25 milliseconds seems to be a good, uh, a good amount, I mean, like 30, 20, it's probably not much of a difference, but when it's running, you can hear it like just twiddle the numbers and you'll be able to hear if it sounds like a normal pump should. But yeah, that, so turning the amount of time it is off down is how you make the pump go faster. As I said, this will work for any of the air heating, diesel pump heater things. Bobasto, Embers Back, anything that's got a blower motor, a glow plug and a fuel pump. Because that's the only three things you need. This one, if we're putting it back together, I would need a third one of these to control the circulation fan. Because it's got another fan that it needs to blow air around and through the things. But your normal... Air diesel here doesn't have that, it's just got that blower one to blow everything across the fins. And this works. Granted, it's not it's not as easily adjustable as you know the stock ECU, but should times ever come where you can't get ECUs or whatnot, you can probably still get these or keep these as spares. Or if you don't want to use the thing, because once this is running, that's it. You just leave it alone. You don't need to adjust it. But yeah, that's it's an option out there for people that don't want to program or don't know how to program, like me. Uh, or if you just want an alternative to, you know, run it up. Let's say for the time it takes to start. Once it's started and running, it's not difficult to get it to flame out, but there's a lot of... It's very forgiving. You can get the air and the fuel pretty wrong before it'll actually flame out on you. But yeah, so that, that was that. I better disconnect that for just in case. In case I turn the pump back on, we end up with uh, fluid everywhere. I was planning on putting all this back together to show you it doing it, but this, I felt, made more sense because nobody's going to have using a fucking dual top, really. It's not. That's just a thing. I did. I even made nice things on the laser. I even made, made things where I could... I was going to do that and put them all in a nice little thing there, of the fuel pump and the, oh not this one because then I realised there wasn't actually enough space to make wires so I made another one where there was space for wires but I haven't bothered with that, I thought I would just show you it running out in the open in the bench here. Any comments, questions, anything like that, uh, please leave them down below. I'll try my very best to answer them and as always, thanks for watching.